Hello everybody! I believe that dual booting is a great way to try other setups without losing any data as well as retaining full compatibility with otherwise out of reach software. A prime example of dual booting should be Windows 10 and a Linux distro sharing the same machine. Here on my channel though, I like to take it just a bit too far. Today I'll attempt to dual boot Windows 98 and Windows 11. Now you might be thinking, that is impossible. These operating systems are way too far apart to be installed on the same machine. Well, you're partially correct. It is indeed impossible to get it working on 99% of the hardware, especially with Windows 11 enforcing more new imaginary hardware limitations and Windows 98 slowly disappearing in the abyss of the past. Despite such an age gap, there is still some hardware in the middle that can boot both Windows 98 and Windows 11. I happen to own a laptop that apparently does boot them. It is the newer Sandy Bridge Lenovo G570. The older one did not boot Windows 98 for some reason. More on that later. Meanwhile, take a look at the specs of that rocker. And with that, let's begin the install. I will get Windows 98 going first, because it might scream about an existing NTFS partition, or literally everything else. I don't even want to imagine what would happen if Windows 11 was present during the Windows 98 setup process. First of all, SATA controller mode must be set to compatible, because Windows 98 does not support HCI. What did you expect? Obviously, you can't just outright install it after tweaking the controller mode either. The DVD-ROM won't work at all. Don't worry though, it is not necessary to set up Windows 98. It sounds pretty dumb, but it's just a nasty workaround. What I will do is I'll boot to Windows 11 installer, partition the disk for Windows 98, copy the installation files in a separate directory, and start the installation from a hard drive. Booting back into Windows 98, it still doesn't recognize the DVD drive, but the files are already on the hard disk, so we can start the install locally. Alright, here's the partition I've made and the Win98 folder containing all necessary installation files. I'll just run setup.exe from there and we'll be good to go. And we are in! There's an TFS caution, but it's just a caution, so we can skip it. I'll go through setup as usual adding some components along the way. I like some additional themes. 
I'm gonna lie, all for that cloud wallpaper. It's really good. The copying process flows without any errors. But here we run into a big issue. Remember, this machine has 4GB of RAM, which is a theoretical limit of a 32-bit system. And it is running a system from 1998. Back then even a single gigabyte of RAM was considered absolutely gigantic and massive. Think about Linux 1TB of RAM setup. Yes, that is exactly what was thought of a gigabyte back then. This is actually a huge issue. Let alone theoretical 4, Windows 98 was limited just to a gigabyte of RAM. Wanna know why? There was a certain OEM that decided to create a beastly machine with Windows 98 on board. Not like they could have used Windows NT. Microsoft surprisingly accepted that offer and amped up the memory limit to 1 gigabyte. They did sacrifice the minimum memory requirement for that stunt though. All due to the nature of the memory manager Windows has. Either way, that's not the point. What can we do with that thing? Lucky for us, there was a fantastic programmer Rudolf Lohr, which was primarily writing 9x patches and compatibility fixes to help these versions run on newer hardware. One of them exactly patches the virtual memory manager to accept those theoretical 4GB of RAM. Just so you know, Windows 11 minimum memory requirement is exactly 4GB. This little button is in a real thin eyes there. Just kidding, Windows 11 requirements are I mean. Anyway, to install that patch, I will just copy it over using a Windows 11 installer and run it inside the command prompt mode. Now Windows 98 boosted with the full RAM set. Just gotta put in the username and add a product key. It's that easy. The driver setup begins. That is the most unnerving part of installing Windows 98 on seemingly unsupported hardware. And we get a blue screen. This is exactly the part where my old G570 got completely denied. It would just get to that part and always throw a blue screen. Hey, that's a cool effect actually. Let's restart. And just as if nothing happened, it continues the setup. We take what we can get, I got no issue with that. The rest of the setup goes well. So with that Windows 98 was installed, and that's it? You thought that was it, right? Well, you're wrong. Let's deploy a bunch of drivers on it. Gotta set the cloud wallpaper first. First, I installed the USB patch. Then the Sound Blaster driver for kicks and giggles. It didn't install. 
then the 9x Unicode layer. And finally the VBEMP display driver, which worked. Sixteen by nine display patches don't work in conjunction with the driver, so I didn't even bother to try them. And with that Windows 98 was pretty much finished. That's probably the best you can set it up on the new hardware. Let's move on to the Windows 11 meme. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to say the last word, my bad. This laptop does not support Windows 11. That means we can freely install it on this bad boy with almost no effort. With a few magic registry keys, we can bypass all the Windows 11 requirements and continue with the installation. I'll skip the first time setup, by this point it's already stale and generic to show. Gotta appreciate the screen though, it's looking damn good. I also the dark theme and the wallpaper, of course put the taskbar to the left, since it being centered is just an insult to Windows family of products. Finally, I just have to set up the dual boot. People actually suggest to install newer versions first to enjoy the perks of automatic bootloader setup. But let's be real, we have hands and knowledge and we can set it up ourselves. First, we create the Windows 98 bootloader entry and specify that it uses a boot sector instead of a Windows loader. Next, we set the first volume as a boot source. Remember that partition and volume symlink indexes begin with 1. Now we need to set the 98 bootloader path, which is in fact a copy of the boot sector, uh, the first sector on our logical drive. Finally, I'll put the boot entry to the bottom, so the Windows 10 is on the top. And that's pretty much it for the dual boot part. So, just to clarify, both Windows versions boot and function correctly. Here's 98.
and here's 11 or 10. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care.